Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, you'll probably be about as good as I was. That's kind of the way it works, you know, and I, I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. So you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night, all right? Okay. All right, go ahead. Hey. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? All right. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. You want something, go get it. Period. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the Minimalistic Muslim Podcast, episode 6. This is your host, Fasal Rahman, and with me is my co host, Iman Rahman. Iman Rahman, you need to get closer to the mic, darling. There. Better? Yeah, that's better. I can hear you better now. You've got to get used to the mic. I know. I'm really close, close to, to it. Mic. I really, you're not as close to it how I have to be it's because you have a deep voice. I have no idea. Because you're quite far. When yeah. I'm here, no one can hear me and then we have to be here. Ah, uh, see? You can yeah, hear it. I have to be really close to the mic. Okay. Really Do you know what it is? Um, it depends whether your voice is soft, sharp, deep. Yeah, you got deep It voice. needs to uh, adjust it. I may uh, adjust it later. Okay, cool. But just try to keep an eye on keeping it close. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm episode good. six. We've done six episodes. Exactly. Had it's, it feels, quite, it's going really fast. Has, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It's almost, you said it was going to be a year soon, isn't it? You're going to like the Are end you crazy? A year? We started in September. Oh. <laughs> We're in November. So when did you say you said it was going to be like a year? It'll be a year and a year from September. Okay, so I'm really dumb saying that. <laughs> What did you mean? If it, does it feel like a year? I've done it, okay, it's gone really fast, mm -hmm. but then it's also gone slow. I don't know how to explain it. It's like I, I, I can't put it into words. It's, it's it's quite. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I think you know when you do the podcast, it feels slow, but then when you upload it and people are watching it, yeah. it feels fast. But then it also feels slow when you go back to doing the podcast. Yeah, yes, yeah, how it is. Okay, no, it's good. It's um for me. I mean, it's six episodes. Like I said, we started in September. It's all moved quite quickly. Mm. I've tried to find interesting conversations, something that we can both bounce off. And I've, and to be honest, we're getting some good responses. Um, that is the prompt to everyone out there who's listening to remember to go to www.minimalisticmuslim.com, um, type in your email address, which will be in the homepage, and subscribe. And so every time we launch an episode, you guys will be the first to hear about it. So remember to do that, as well as all of those who are listening via the podcast platforms yeah yeah so all those listening on podcasting platforms also need to go to the website and subscribe and that way you also will be notified as to when these episodes are coming up so what do we have in this episode we are going to be talking about something very interesting as always mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about what Iman? okay so I remember it being something to do with EQ. EQ. Yeah. Equalizer. <laughs> Isn't that short for equalizers? EQ. I'm not sure. But music when you do the equalizing. So what are we talking about? Yeah. So I just remember you saying EQs and IQs, and I know obviously IQs ah, are. Okay. I don't remember what the I know that I is for intellect. I don't remember what the Q means. What it stands Interesting. for. Interesting. I keep forgetting. Mm -hmm. Um and. But I know the E means emotional, but I don't know what the key means right, again. Brilliant. We are talking about emotional intelligence. But the reason you're thinking oh. EQ 
is because as in uh, with IQ mm. which is intellectual intelligence the reason they ha- you have the Q it stands for quotient right which means a certain amount of characteristic you have okay. so how much of a characteristic of intelligence do you have is known as right. IQ okay, how sense. much characteristic of emotional intelligence that you have is known as eq mm. that's, that's that's where, where you were getting the cue okay. but yeah i mean generally people refer it to as eq yeah um some people refer it to emotional intelligence it just makes more sense because with iq you generally think about your i don't know you know, your, you know yeah. how intelligent you're now th- th- this is the thing when when we come to intelligence we do break it up in two things we, we talk about it being one how good your brain retains information, learns mm. information, and that's done through standardized standardization tests, mm. which then you get your IQ score and it tells you, wow, you're so clever, you're amazing. You're like an Einstein. Do you know your IQ? I have no idea. I don't know any. Do you do in school? Because I saw, I don't know, I just saw it in a movie where they did it in school. And like this kid has a really big, like, high IQ. Yeah, I think if you went to some elitist school, then they check they it. probably would but if you want to have a bit of fun i'm sure you can do it, yeah you can do it online yeah. and it'll kind of give you an idea of your iq mm. um but um the iq tests were introduced in the early 1900s okay so people started to study especially in the west this is the western stat yeah the brain how well someone's mental capacity is is in the early 1900s so we're coming to about 120 years okay. of, of people understanding there's such a thing called an IQ test. Right. EQ tests are quite new. Yeah. And right? I've not yeah. had that term since. You have, it's not been written well about, mm. it's not been out there, but now due to things like mental health, mm. a lot of people are becoming a bit more aware of what this is and realizing that having a higher EQ score seen as more important than having a high iq score Hmm. a lot of people say that you can achieve much more in your life if you have a high eq score because we'll come to what that entails what that is um and why why is that but um the eq test gained popularity post 95 okay so it's only about 24 25 years Mm -hmm. so like 120 years about iq yeah 25 years yes, people have started to now understand what is emotional intelligence mm. when i mean that i'm using again uh, from the west i'm not talking about islamic i'm talking about from the west right that, that's when they started studying that's when a book called emotional intelligence written by daniel goldman came into the scene so since that book came i mean i've not had the opportunity to read that book i will put a link in the show notes but he supposedly explains this to the T in terms of what it is um, and the the advantages, the disadvantages, the reasons mm, why yeah. you should try to up your EQ score. Um, and from his book, you've had Islamic scholars mm. um, such as... Part. Yeah, there's, there's, there's another book written by Sheikh Mikhail Smith. Okay. And he takes the work of Daniel Goldman and he elaborates it in terms of an Islamic Islamic perspective. Yeah. In terms of how that book, I mean, he uses that book to help him write his book. Right. Um, Again, I've not had the the fortune of reading his book, but I'll I'll write a description in there um, for those of you who want to have a look at it. So, Iman. Yes. Emotional intelligence. What do you think? That means. That means. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, emotional intelligence would be um, you. Is it part of like you reading, be able to read people? Like, say they're upset, you'll know. You yeah. Because sometimes, you know, you, if someone's angry or upset, you feel that vibe. Okay. That you, like, you know, oh, this person may not want to be around, mm-hmm. you know, other people. They may just want to be on their own right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it's to do with reading people, um, emotion tangents, what to do in a situation if someone's like that. Okay. Um, I mean, to be honest, to be fair, that is, that is, um, a good understanding of it. I mean, the definition given 
mm. for emotional intelligence is your ability to recognize and understand emotions mm. which is kind okay. of what you yeah, said kind of. and then it's and your skill at using this awareness mm. so n- now you realize this to manage yourself and others in your relationships so what it's saying is like you said you you can see the emotion yeah. feel the emotion in yourself and others right and manage the circumstances accordingly okay all right so that's the the kind of definition is in terms of what that means so if i was to say to you right now mm. how are you feeling what am i feeling what would you say um i'm feeling i don't know quite good i feel more i feel a bit productive um a little bit energetic because i had some coffee <laughs> a few um hours ago so i guess and I, I feel good i feel i don't feel as i don't feel down don't feel sad don't feel angry i'm positive right now i guess you're positive yeah so that that's that's the thing i mean if i was to for those of you listening to this i'd ask you the same question as well how are you feeling right now are you happy are you sad are you bored <laughs> yeah do you feel inspired or like your mom, are you energized and positive because she's had a coffee? Yeah. <laughs> I need to speak to your mom. What's she giving you coffees for? <laughs> okay. Um, but that, I mean, if you're able to understand how you, how you are really authentically feeling at any given moment, then it's a step in the right direction in, in, in actually tapping into your emotional intelligence. Mm. Now, many of you may feel that you have a good understanding of emotional intelligence, but it can be tested okay in how you interact with others so for example iman yes do you find yourself or others telling you that whenever you have something to say you have to say it without looking at where and who you're with um don't think so i mean like let's say for example so do you just speak your mind as and when you need mm, to uh, or do you i depend yeah i think it just depends who i'm with let's say it was friends speak differently and I would say it's certain things to them and keep certain things away from them. And then with his family, mum, dad is different, mm-hmm. cousins different. I wouldn't say the same information to everyone, basically. Okay. Depends who they are. Well, the, the thing is, if you are able to, if, if, if in that example I said to you, you said no, mm. it shows that you have a form of emotional intelligence. So you're aware that people aren't telling you, oh, Iman, now is not the right time to say right. that. Do you see? Mm. So that's where I'm going with that. So, um, that doesn't really go according to a, a specific given time. It's just how you are. You, yeah. you, you carry yourself in a way that you're aware of what circumstances you have, you're yeah. in. Um, and I would say that about myself as well, that I'm very much aware. Like I, I sometimes choose not to say something knowing that it's probably not the best time to say it. Yeah, but we'll come to that. that yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll come to that later on. Okay. Now, in terms of emotional intelligence, there's a... A little test for everyone. I'm not going to do a quiz, but this is what everyone can ask themselves in identifying whether you think you, ha- whether, not you think, whether you have a low EQ or a high EQ. All right. So I'm going to run okay. this past you as well and you tell me what you think. So it's said that people who have low EQ mm. have difficulty with understanding the feelings of others. Right. So, you know, when you said initially, oh, if someone's upset, angry. Yeah, then you'll know about it. Yeah. Someone with a low EQ, Mm. they're saying, will find it difficult Mm. to read that. Okay. So, you, because obviously feeling is an emotion. Yeah. It's not said. So, no one's going to come to you and say, I'm angry. (laughs) Right. You're going to see it. You're going to sense it. Yeah. And from that, you're going to know whether this person's upset, frustrated, sad, happy. So I guess with me, let's say if it was with, I don't know, it depends with the person. Like let's say I know I can feel it, but then let's say it's my, I don't know, my brother and my sister. Yeah. And I know they're angry and I just like, I don't know, I'm in the mood to just annoy them a little yeah. bit more. Then I'm not doing it out of, oh, I don't, I didn't know that they were like that. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it because I knew it, but I'm just trying to, I mean, it's not a nice thing to do, but I know I do it. Right. And then let's say it's with, um, let's say friends. They're not in the mood to talk about certain things then I would didn't really pick it like let's say something happened mm-hmm. i wouldn't really you know say anything about it i'll just keep it you know where it is mm-hmm. so just not to upset the other person so stuff like that but then there's some people i've met where i can't i don't understand them sometimes like they're 
they're all right. You think, okay, what do you mean they're, they're hard to read? I guess so. Like they're happy, but then all of a sudden they may click a switch. I may say something by accident, and they will get them upset. And I didn't know. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I didn't read it. I didn't know you were like that. Do you know? I find myself as someone who reads people very well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and do. I've got to say that when you were younger, mm. I found it difficult to read you. Yeah, you've said that before. Like yeah. Poker face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So it would be like, um, but I think over the years. I don't know if you felt that about yourself. You know what? I don't think it was something I could control. I just, when I, if I felt angry, upset or sad, mm. I wouldn't really show it. It was just Why? something. I don't know. It wasn't like as if, oh, if I show it, then I, it's like a sign of weakness. It wasn't like that. It was just my, I don't know. I couldn't control it. I didn't even know I wasn't doing you, it. Did you think, did you ever hear it when you were at school? Or did you, did anyone ever tell you that? Oh no, don't show your emotions or anything like that, which is yeah. kind of subliminally. Because I, I, as far as I remember, I've always kind of encouraged you to yeah, express yeah. yourself. Because I remember at school as well, let's say someone's just like annoyed me. I wouldn't say anything to the teacher and I wouldn't say anything to that person. I would always keep it to myself. Mm-hmm. And if the teacher wouldn't, the teacher wouldn't really realize, I wouldn't like cry. I wouldn't do anything about it. And I think over the years, I just, it just stuck with me that I didn't really have to show anyone because what are they going to do anyway? Because mm. even if I did tell the teacher, nothing really happened. It was just sit in the corner and then they'll do it the next day and then sit in the corner and do it the next day. It didn't really change anything. Mm-hmm. So I just felt that there is no need to talk, which I know I knew that, you know, you do have to talk even now. It's good to talk about your, you know. Do you see yourself now as having understood that and now being more expressive? Yeah, I feel like I'm more expressive. If I'm upset, I would either say it or I would just leave, I guess. Mm-hmm. I would kind of not like subliminal, but I would show. Would you sign. say, listen, I'm upset, I'm walking away? Maybe not as blunt, okay. but I was maybe like a sign thing. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so the first point, like I was saying, is people who have a low, who, who have difficulty in understanding the feeling of others, mm. this is a sign of someone who's potentially got low EQ. Right. As you've explained, it's something that can be worked upon. Mm. For example, with me, I would find it difficult to read you, but I think over the years you've got better at it. Mm. Okay. Um, point number two, people who with low EQ tend to blame others for existing emotional problems like um what i blame you that i'm angry yeah so they don't take responsibility for their feelings it, something else could have triggered something right they're not aware or they're not not that they're not aware they've probably it's it's in their brain mm. but because of circumstances they decide to blame you for it right so oh it's because of you i'm angry <laughs> okay. all right but you haven't really done anything and you'll probably be scratching your head like i haven't really spoken yeah. to you but they're saying that people who are like that mm. generally suffer from a low EQ. Right. Um, and, and in doing so, mm. they are also what's called, um, they, they, they class other people as being overly sensitive. Oh. And what I mean by that is you'll find as an example is let's say you've got a guy or a girl and they crack jokes. Right. But let's say they crack it with someone who's feeling a bit depressed or is a bit low. Uh-huh. They haven't said that they're low or depressed, but they're in that mood. They're in that emotion. Yeah. And when that person who cracked a joke doesn't get the reaction mm. that they wanted, they'll come back to you and say, oh, you're being oversensitive. Okay. Do you see? As yeah. opposed to understanding, hold on, what's wrong with this person? Mm. They're thinking more like, oh, they didn't get the joke, man. What's wrong with you people? Oh, cheer up. What's yeah. wrong? You know that. It's that. And that, again, can be a sign of someone who's got low emotional intelligence. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've come across this one, someone who has unexpected emotional outbursts. So one minute, they're perfectly normal. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then they just turn crazy. Yeah. Or not crazy, I mean. Yeah, they just start, they become more, yeah, yeah. I've met, um, I've, as I said, I've been with people like that and Mm. it's something that you feel like, did I do something? Or is it because something's happened with them? And then sometimes you feel like, oh, it's okay, don't worry. You want to calm them down. Like, um, you know, I've met with people like that. And it's, it's actually, I don't like to be around those kind of people mm-hmm. because it's like, you don't know if you should, you know, not what talk the, to them. Or the important thing to remember is like I was saying to you that all of these are, is something that's not, no, they don't, it's not, you're not the cause of the problem. Yeah, but it feels like in the moment you feel like you did do something though. And yeah. you start to think, what did I do? Basically? This is where the understanding of emotional intelligence comes from. It's like to realize that certain people are going to do something yeah. and behave in a way that you cannot control. This is something for them to deal with. All you can do is recognize that 
you know that you didn't instigate something, yeah. but this person has a certain issue which they then need to deal with themselves. Mm. And this will we'll come into that. How do you approach such a thing? We'll yeah. do this later. Yeah. Um, so we did the that the outbursts, um, lacking empathy. Do you understand what that means? What, what's wrong? Yeah. So You're looking at the levels. In there, I'm just looking at the thing. It's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Um, so empathy. So people um, who lack empathy. Do you know what we mean by empathy? So empathy is something to do with like um, feeling emotion for other people. So Correct. sympathy, that kind of stuff. Not sympathy. Oh, empathy. Okay. Yeah, wait, wait. Sympathy is different. Empathy is when you're unable to. Um, feel for other people yeah so lacking empathy is when right. you're unable to realize what that person is going through right that's usually the definition and sympathy is when sad isn't it we feel for, sorry when for you someone. feel sorry for someone right. yeah. Okay, yeah um so empathy is you realize that they're upset why they're upset mm. okay uh, there are various levels of being empathetic but the general the general thing is that yeah you're able to understand the other person's emotions and feelings right um generally Mm-hmm. women uh it's said studies say that are more empathetic than men mm-hmm. purely because they're nurture nurturers with with children and maybe it's inherited in them that's the way Allah's designed them yeah. but they're generally seen as being more empathetic they'll be able to be more aware of their children and therefore other people's emotions right each case is different but generally that's a general statement i guess right um poker face which you spoke yeah. about earlier. So you can't tell what that person's yeah. feeling. It's very so it's difficult it's like a blank face. to read that person. Yeah. Um, they easily get stressed. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and they don't show their emotions and keep it bottled up. Okay, that's what I used to do. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's someone with, again, these are these are elements that someone has who needs to work on their emotional intelligence. As a child, I guess it's expected because you're unaware of what these feelings are. I guess so. What's causing this. As you get older, when you're aware of your emotions, that's where self-control comes in. Mm. Knowing yourself, okay, what ticks me? Why did I get ticked? Does it bother me? Is it that bad of an issue? That's the stuff you do as you grow in emotional intelligence. Yeah. As a child, it's something that you're not aware of and it's going to, you know, you're finding your feet. Yeah. For example, your brother. Mm. You know, when he was younger, um, unlike you or your sister, he learned to speak slightly later. But I think we were having this example yeah, the other day, think, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. And uh, I said, like, b- only he knew what he wanted. But mm. because he was, uh, he was unable to articulate it, he couldn't explain it, he would get frustrated. Yeah. And, but people just saw his frustration. Oh, he's sure? angry, yeah. he's upset, it's something wrong, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Me being me, I was just like, he's, he's unaware, he can't explain himself. Mm. When his vocabulary extends and, he's, and he can find the words to explain it, the guy will start talking. Right. And alhamdulillah, we, we've, if you look at him now, he's very yeah. aware and he says things. Um, he's, he's come a long way. But yeah. that again, if, if I was to ask him when he was then, why he would struggle all he would know is that i know i'm upset but mm-hmm. i can't explain it to you why mm-hmm. and as you grow you would expect to be better at it mm-hmm. okay um getting into a lot of arguments okay people with low emotional intelligence tend to get into a lot of arguments um any thoughts on that um not really not much i mean that one what was the when they get stressed i didn't know that the argument is because they say that they're unable to pick up on the emotions of other people so they're not able to understand their emotional state so they just generally if they've got something to say they'll say it so let's say you do have a high eq Mm. but you are stressed at the time then does your eq just drop say that again like for example you know how you're saying like people with good emotional intelligence right Mm. So now let's say that they're stressed, mm-hmm. then they won't be able to feel other people's emotions. No. Mm. What, uh, okay. What it is, it's not a black and white statement. It's not like certain things get turned off and turned on. It just means, look, I consider myself as someone who's who's got a fairly good emotional intelligence, but I can get stressed out. Right. All right. That means that when I get stressed, which is a part of life, it's how do I deal with my stress? Right. Okay. If I let, if I let that emotion override me. Yeah then that's where i need to work on so it's it's not like 
it's an ongoing thing. You will continuously throughout life start polishing yourself. Yeah. And making sure that there are certain qualities that you have that you need to be better at. You know, and yeah. the more you do something, the more better you become at something. All right. It's like, for example, we went to, we just came back from your horse riding. Yeah. And when we, when you started, you can probably remember how you were. And now you can just sit on the horse, you know how to hold it, you know how to canter. You, you get excited. You're not like at that first stage where I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, you know that the animal is something that you need to control as opposed to it controlling you, yeah. which is probably one of the hardest things. Yeah. Because we're used to controlling things that don't have emotions. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have to control a horse, which sometimes has a mood of its own. Right. Like your one you were saying is didn't want to listen to yeah. you today or something. <laughs> yeah. So you have that, but then it's your ability to polish it and get better. Yeah. So it, the emotional intelligence is something similar where it's like anything. The more you do something, the better you become at it. Yeah. But you have to be consciously reminded and aware. That's where the struggle comes because it takes a lot of effort. It does, isn't it? Yeah. To some, you're blessed. It comes naturally. Some people are naturally empathetic. They get it. They can read it. We'll come to that. But some people, if you don't, it doesn't mean, you know. You can't be there. Yeah. So like yeah. I said, a lot of people would say, well, are you born with it? And some people are sometimes sometimes the people in the study saying it's hereditary your circumstances where you're growing up how your parents interact with you yeah. all of that plays a part but it's never too late if you if you want to um if you want to learn it then you if can. you want to be better yeah because yeah. these are all skills that are going to enhance you as a person yeah and when anyone has an interaction with you they'll have a pleasant interaction with you they'll enjoy your company yeah so it's all about being a better person and i guess that's what you know one of the reasons of of these this show is and this podcast is is about how to better yourself and not so much get too dwelled on other people it's about yourself um so that's um some things about low eq mm. um so let's talk about high eq so people okay. that have a good sense of emotional intelligence what are they like so these are people that are gonna find that they are the kind of people that influence other people okay so they see your potential right and they can nurture that potential right and possibly advise you mm -hmm. and tell you that you can do something so okay. not not necessarily do what you want to do but it's like a sign of a leader okay. a leader is someone who who has the ability to see certain skill sets within you or anyone for that matter right but has the power to extract that so mm -hmm. i see something in you and i say man you can do this and i can make you aware of that skill mm -hmm. but i can also help you bring it out bring it out right. that's the sign of a good leader right but with with high emotional intelligence obviously you probably need to be a good leader to to do that yeah. but the skill is more like you can influence others because you can see their skill set right so they may have self-doubt they may have lack of confidence. They may have certain issues within themselves, but you can help influence them because you're in touch with your emotions and theirs and say, listen, yeah. you can do this. Why don't you try to do this? So that you'll guide them mm. and doing that. So if you meet people like that in your life, then you can say that, yeah, they're quite in touch with their emotional intelligence side. Yeah. You've got um, people who know how to read a situation. Do you know what I mean by that? Uh, so something similar to um, what you're talking about with people, but then it's just, like a more of a big scale basically so like um an example would be situation let's say everyone's up like you're you come into a room i guess mm -hmm. and everyone's uptight and everyone's like on edge yeah and you can feel that yeah. i guess yeah is that a sign yeah 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 okay. you can, uh, so for example let's say you're upset right and you walk into a room and there's 10 people that upset yeah. you know you may think oh, okay now's not the best time to so what I have to say, yeah. do you see? So you'll be able to read the situation and say, do I say this? Do I show this? Do I not do this? Mm -hmm. And then you may choose to say, no, I'm not going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. You do it later. So that's knowing the situation. Um, you can express yourself clearly. Yeah. Okay. You, you know yourself well enough mm -hmm. to express yourself clearly. Okay. You don't need people telling you you're like this, that, and the other. You can, you know, you're in touch with your emotions and you can verbally communicate them quite clearly. Yeah. I'm getting upset. Can mm. you stop now, please? You know, like I, you were saying to you about your brother and sister. Yeah. Knowing the ability to say, that's enough. Mm. 
Um, as you get older, even within your 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 peer group, friends, colleagues, uh, cousins, and all of that, you're respected. You're known um, that you're able to prioritize and be dependable dependent on. Right. All right. So if you say you're going to do something, they know that you're going to you're going to do it. They're not going to have to chase you about doing something. You're not going to have to be reminded. You're going to take whatever steps it you need to take in order to make sure that if you've committed to something, you're going to get the job done. Mm. And because of that, you get respected. All right. So yeah. it's um, so again, you're able to prioritize. So if if, I, if two people come to you, Iman, I need you for this. Iman, I need you for that. You can quickly process the information, prioritize, and commit whether you can and cannot. Right. You don't get emotionally sucked in. Yeah. You don't get, oh, you got to do it because I'm a da 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 ba ba. You know, sometimes you get that. Yeah, yeah. You're able to kind of look beyond that and make your decisions based on judgment of the circumstances. Sometimes you find people that they need your help. Yeah. You're able to understand that emotion as well and therefore prioritize that in your life. Okay? Yeah. You can read facial expressions. Okay. So the opposite to poker face. Yeah. All right. Um, so you can read if someone's happy, sad, upset. Mm hmm. And, and that kind of stuff, all right? Um, and even if they're silent, you know, sometimes you, yeah. you just can read someone's face and they're not saying anything, mm. but you can read that something's... Yeah, not they're right. Bursting, like they're about to burst with excitement yeah. or they're... They're, they're upset. They're upset and nervous. Yeah. However, you can you can read that kind of stuff, right? You, you often find these people curious about other people. They like to ask questions. Mm. So again, it comes under self-growth. It helps them grow right. by asking questions and just being curious about people. Why did you think that? Why did you do that? Okay. Do you see? And they're curious in terms of why you decided to do something. Right. So that kind of stuff you'll find in, in high EQ people. Mm. And this is going to make you smile. People who have cats. Really? I generally taught, thought of those who have a high EQ. Why do you think that is? I'm not sure. Uh, does a cat bring out something in them? I don't know. Come on, tell me your experience with your cat. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, those listening, your mom's cat is called Loki. <laughs> um, I don't know. What does the cat do? I don't know. Maybe um, how, you know, how it starts to purr, maybe like how it rolls around. I don't know. Maybe it just makes you feel good. Because well, I know that when a cat purrs, it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. I actually don't know why it helps you, though, when you're EQ. Yeah. Emotion. Okay. Dogs. Yep. What are they good at doing? Being happy <laughs> with a dog, you'd know it's happy. Yeah, you'd know its mood. Oh, with a cat, you can't. A cat, right? You're gonna be guessing. It's just gonna remember that thing you told me the other day. Yeah. It looked at me a certain yeah. way, <laughs> right? And you're like, "What do you want?" <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that it keeps you guessing. You it it doesn't speak. Mm. It, it it's emotional. The way it behaves, you have to like. Are you hungry? Yeah. Why did you look at me that way? <laughs> You, you know, it's almost like yeah. a spellbound thing, yeah. but you feel like, what's my cat trying to tell me something? Right. And generally people who, who are good with cats mm. have a good emotional intelligence. Who's that guy you watched, that cat guy? Uh, was it Jackson Galaxy, I think his name? I think that was his name. Yeah. He's so, got really, yeah. So he does cat stuff, right? Yeah. But if you see him, how good he is with cats and also how good he is at managing the cat owners, yeah, he'll tell them, this is what your cat wants. This is what your cat needs. Yeah. You're being too aggressive or you're being too this. So not only is he trying to fix the cat, he's working out what are you guys doing, yeah. which is making your cat behave that way. Yeah. Do you see? So that comes under emotional intelligence. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to see Loki the same way now. <laughs> yeah. But for, the, for those of you who are listening, our cat is, how would you describe it? Um... It it's does funny, its own thing. Yeah, it's a funny one. It's like it's very independent. However, especially at night time, um, oh, like at night time he's much hyper, but in the morning he's very like you know nice, chilled out, relaxing. Mm -hmm. He loves to be stroked. But then there's a certain time when you know he's starting to bite and everything. So he's a he's a funny cat, but you know, still loves. The, the thing with with Loki's, I remember. He's not a lab cat. Yeah, he that's what you wanted. Yeah. Well, you so badly was, wanted a lab cat. Yeah, and this guy is so the opposite. Like if you go active. to if you go to stroke him, he's like, why are you stroking me for? Yeah. Just feed me and I want to <laughs> sleep there. Yeah. Not where you put me. I want to sleep where I want to sleep. You know? <laughs> and it's just like, oh. <laughs> but having said that, he's got you wrapped around his fingers. So exactly. it's just like whatever he wants, so, he gets. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Now we've kind of understood a bit about emotion intelligence. Right. 
what it means, its definition, science of low and high emotional intelligence. Where do you think it all starts from? Um, How does someone build, when does someone build on their emotional intelligence? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe because uh, they've seen other people do it. Like so when you're when you're a child, so child, yeah, okay. It's like maybe it's like a teacher talking to you, and you feel like this way. Your parents, I guess. Um, Bullseye, yeah. parents, parents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like how they talk to you. Like, Are you okay? That kind of stuff. I guess. There you go. So the parents of a child will build the emotional intelligence of their child. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the so basically, you, the parents, for those of you who have children, you will be the the foundation of establishing your child's emotional intelligence. Okay. Or you will either handicap them. Right. All right. So when parents argue, mm-hmm. when there's frustration, yelling, their inability to control their anger, children see this, they're not necessarily going to say anything. All of that plays a part in how they cope with emotions Mm. so you know there's there's going to be times where for for example your mom's been upset with me or i've been upset with her and we kind of try our best to say are the children there are the children not there sometimes the heat of the moment crazy things happen yeah um but then you know parents have to pay a special attention to knowing what they're saying where they're saying because your children will be listening yeah. all right and that again so the nurturing and the ability for the child to understand its emotional intelligence happens at that age and through which when you go to school friends when you interact maybe someone's upset there's a problem you'll you'll be growing from there but if you come from a household where you have a good grounding you're comfortable you're able to speak your mind you don't feel that i can't say and think and do what i want because someone's going to get upset and angry then that comes with bottling your emotions and then we shift towards low eq right do you see so a child is very like i said you know you you have emotions you're not particularly aware of your emotions but as you grow your circumstances and your situations around you either promote your ability to express yourself mm-hmm. or lock it all away. Okay. All right. So that's yeah. that's what you will judge and decide for yourself. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. All right. And, you know, for yourself and all of those out there, the encouragement is, is that your child should be able to speak their mind, come to you, have the ability and the confidence to know that you're going to be listening and you're able to help in whatever it is that they want you know if they're happy you're involved in that happiness yeah. if they're upset you're involved in understanding why and therefore create a natural bond and also their emotional intelligence yeah. all right so that that's the kind of stuff that will help you um in being better people better human yeah. beings uh and uh having good interactions with other people now did you know okay seven percent of emotions is communicated verbally wow okay seven percent of emotions is communicated verbally 38 percent of emotion is communicated through your tone tone okay and 55 percent um is your facial expression okay so seven percent of what you say Seven, sorry, seven percent of a conversation. Yeah, you get your emotion effort. Is 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 your conversation? Yeah, it's what you're saying. Mm. The vast majority is how you're saying it. Yeah, the tone, the tone and your facial expression. So, if you have really low emotional intelligence, all you're hearing is words. Right. Do you see? Yeah. The, and that's the seven percent. So you're just saying, "I'm upset." Oh, he's upset. <laughs> Okay, I'm really happy. Oh, he's really happy. Yeah. You're just hearing the words. Much more of that communication is through the tone. Is he speaking slowly, fast, scared, yeah. upset, excited? Mm. That's the tone in which you're saying it. Right. And 
fifty what was it fifty five percent is yeah. your expression. So you're able to read the excitement, mm. the sadness, the anger, the, you know that. Yeah. And put that together, you get your communication. So far less is just on words. Mm. So again, for those of you out there, you know these are things for you to think about. Seven percent of what you're saying are your words. The vast majority is how you're expressing yourself through your facial expressions and the tone that you're using. You master that, and now you, you're you're Hikey. in command. You're high, you're you're in you're in uh, control of your emotional intelligence. How you speak, yeah, and all of that. It's part of emotional intelligence. Remember. So let me give you an example of tone. I can't really see my facial expression, yeah. but tone. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you three things mm -hmm. in a different tone. Okay. Tell me what you think. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're all right. Okay, the first and second one are quite... So the first one seems as if you're really jolly. You're really happy. You're really content with your day. Okay. Second one, you seem really like angry and just, you know, you don't want to be there. Okay. The third one is like you're inquisitive, I guess. You like you actually genuinely want to know? Are you, are you like you know? <laughs> I don't know to explain. Okay, okay. Nearly that's maybe that's me that wasn't done okay. well enough. So the first one to when I said, "You're right," mm -hmm. it's a question. You can hear it in my tone. That was the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're right. Uh huh. Sounds like a question, right? Yeah. Now it sounds like <laughs> you're right. Yeah. That's like yeah. You just yeah. I'm want to fight with you. You're mm -hmm. right. Like yeah. you want to start kind yeah. of a thing. And the other one. You're all right. You didn't say it like that. Didn't I? No, that's sarcastic. Are you saying it like that? It's like, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah, you are all yeah, right. Yeah, before... You, okay. Okay, see, that's what I said. Maybe it's my turn. I'll give you another one. Okay, okay. How good's your Urdu? I can understand it. I right. really struggle that much. By the way, I've got this example from Sheikh Mikhail Smith. So okay. I, th I thought it was quite hilarious. So I thought I'd add it here, but I'll, I'll send you the link. So he says, Acha? Okay. Acha. Okay. Acha. Okay. But it's the same kind of thing, yeah. right? So, like, how do you? They're quite similar. <laughs> Look, if your emotional intent, what what the the reasoning for this is? Remember what I said about the 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 words. Mm. Seven percent of communication is words. So, if if all you know is words, you've just heard me say acha three times. <laughs> yeah? yeah. You've heard me say you are right three times. That's what you've heard the words. Yeah. But if you're good at understanding tone and facial expression which you can see you'll 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 understand this three different things he said right you know okay so uh, in this in this example what did you hear okay so Achha. okay that this, sounds this like a surprise th yeah yeah okay, okay. Fair enough. second okay. one Achha. you understand something now like someone's something's been explained to you so now yeah, you understand I guess, it i guess uh, if i had a slip on my hand and I went Achha. okay uh <laughs> not that i have a slip on my hand I'll like show you that. Like yeah. You wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And acha. That means that you now you understand it, I guess. Yeah, like okay. okay yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. But look, see? So same word, just the tone was different. Mm. And you you could see my face in situation and you know that although he's used the same word, mm. the expression is different. Different, yeah, yeah. You're getting a different So that yeah. helps with the emotional tone. So you're able to do you see? Yeah. yeah. So it's a fun way. Of understanding that, oh yeah, you know what? So if I just concentrate on words, I can get the wrong end of the stick. Mm. But if I understand tone and facial expression, it's basically context, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And the more better at you are, then inshallah, the the the, the more I, the the more IQ is going to say, <laughs> the more EQ that uh, you can work on having. Hmm. Okay, Mon. Yes. Do you remember hearing this? <laughs> No, it's an, it's not okay. your mum waking you up for fajr, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, that sounds like Bruce Lee. Yay! Okay. All right. <laughs> the beginning was like, what is that? Then I had a kick and I had to, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's good old Bruce. All right. What's Bruce well known for? Uh, karate, I guess. Karate. I mean, martial arts. I don't know which certain one he did. I know he did Wing Chun for a bit. 
Will yeah, you? okay, so I'll, I'll go with that. All right, yeah. so Bruce Lee, and that was Bruce Lee's famous scream. <laughs> Apologies to Nadia's mum. That's not how you wake your daughter up for Fajr, <laughs> just in case she gets upset. Um, but um, yes, so he was known for his art of Wing Chun. Right. Why are we talking about Bruce Lee for? I hear you say. Bear with me. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So basically, I'm going to give you a bit of a story. Okay. Then I'm going to explain exactly why so just bear with me a second all right okay so as you know bruce lee was famous for wing chun mm -hmm. um and he started his journey with it man and progressed yeah um fast forward to his famous fight with uh wong jack man right so yeah. he was challenged in his time right by the chinese and the martial artists that you're not allowed to teach the guelo which are western people oh. or it's chinese word for saying westerners all right okay. um and he kind of challenged them to say look give me your best fighter mm -hmm. and uh, if i win then you leave me alone and if i don't then i'll listen and then i'm fine i won't teach him yeah all right so he's so confident in his art so what what they did is there was a fight arranged and he fought right bruce won that fight mm -hmm. if you've you know i think there's various stories and his books and there's movies depicting yeah. this all right but Although he won that fight, there was a thorn in his head. Not a physical thorn. Yeah, in his I was head. like, uh, <laughs> okay. He would ask himself, why did this fight take so long? Why right. was this fight not finished in seconds? Mm, All right. Okay. So, what he did is he started looking at his art of Wing Chun, and mm -hmm. you study Wing Chun. Yeah. So, that's why you should have got this answer correctly. Um, so, he studied it. All right. Yeah. So, when he looked at different arts and different fighting techniques he saw that the traditional fighting method was someone attacks someone defends mm. all right so if you're attacking me i defend then i attack traditionally that was yeah that, that was fighting even now you see mm. you know a boxer would wait you know jab and then punch yeah, yeah. what's wing chun uh was it attacking and defending at the same time correct yeah so now he he thought to himself fine i've got this art it's quite superior to where everyone else is at the moment which is at, uh, blocking and attacking at the same time mm -hmm. all right so if someone comes to you someone does a punch to you you're going to look at i don't know a tan da yeah yeah tan cell which is a block and a punch at the same time yeah having looked at all having looked at his art he then decided to trim it further mm -hmm. so he said if someone's going to attack me if I can see they're attacking me, I'm going to attack them first. Okay. All right. So then he came out with, I mean, not that his words were attack, his words were intercept. So you're going to come towards me. I'm going to intercept you quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. So he came up with his art, which is Jeet Kune Do, which in English translates to the way of the intercepting fist. Wow. So I will intercept whilst you're coming towards me. So what do you think this little story, narration of Bruce Lee has got to do with emotional intelligence? Because if you can think of anything I've said in this story. Um, is it to do with, um, you know, like when you said that he has to intercept first, you mm. first have to see their emotion before um, you can, <laughs> before you like amazing. see them. Brilliant like for example, answer. when they get, when they when you're ready to throw a punch at someone, you yeah. can kind of see it. Fantastic. And then you have to intercept it. Because Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Basically, Bruce mm. was so good at reading you or reading people mm. he would get there first always all right so mm. so for example for his for his theory to say look block and attack and then block attack which is wing chun to right. to attack and i'm going to get there first yeah he needs two things speed which god gifted him anyway yep. timing which god gifted him anyway and the ability to read people which he got down to the t yeah all right so he was able to do this amazingly mm. all right he was able to read you so well okay mm. that glint in your eye that yeah. move in your shoulder that step forward mm. that he polished it to such a t that he was able to get there faster than you were able to get to him and and he was so confident and he developed it to such an extent that he proved himself and you know and written his name in history books mm. okay died at the age of 30 something tender age but to achieve what he achieved in emotional intelligence mm. 
yeah is amazing you know and so in in an art of something like wing chun or martial arts when you're able to read your opponent mm. okay you're coming towards me and and he can read your eyes yeah. your body movement that is that is to the yeah. microseconds you know someone can just move a shoulder and they're coming with a jab and you're able to get in there quick yeah yeah, that he had it to another level but what i'm trying to say is that someone like him perfected his emotional intelligence in the sense of reading your body language mm. so although seven percent is verbal so i'm not gonna hit you yeah you got nothing to say so okay that he's not he's saying he's not hitting me yeah. it's fine but you're walking towards me he's got his guards up right all right so he knows and like i said his timing his speed but his ability to read you made him who he was mm. amazing Okay, so that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Now, we kind of touched upon this where I said, can we develop it or is it hereditary? So do, are you born with this or can you develop it? And right. by now, I would hope you would say... You can develop it. 100%. Yeah. All right. So who do you remember the guy who pioneered it? Not pioneered it, but what was it, 95, that coined the idea of emotional yeah. intelligence. Do you remember his name? No. Daniel Goleman. That's his name. All right. So he came up with four things okay that you can do to enhance your self-awareness so we've gone through what self uh sorry what emotional intelligence is did i just say self-awareness i just gave the first one away oh. <laughs> okay i was going to say emotional intelligence right so we know what emotional intelligence is yeah. we know the signs of low emotional intelligence the yeah. signs of high emotional intelligence mm -hmm. uh, we've had examples of that yep. um and so he's saying that in order to work on your uh, emotional intelligence to polish it to, uh, to be better at it you need to polish four things right those four things are number one self-awareness okay be aware of knowing how you're feeling and why you're feeling it okay all right yeah so again it's easy to say but think about it know what you're feeling so i asked you how you're feeling you said i'm feeling energized yeah had a cup of coffee yeah. yeah so you're feeling all right you know what you're feeling why are you feeling like that i had a cup of coffee yeah so it's it's looking at all of that okay being self-aware my mood is not because of so and so so and so so and so mm. i'm in control you be self-aware number two you self-manage or self-regulate you you know how to handle your distressing emotions effectively if i'm angry yeah. i'm not going to have an outburst i know i'm angry what does what do i do when i'm angry all right mm. rhetorical all right, don't need to answer yeah. that. But it's that. It's for me to look at myself. What should I be doing if I'm angry? Yeah. What should I be doing when I'm ha sad? Mm -hmm. What should I be doing if I need to say something to someone? It's knowing how to manage my emotions effectively. Okay? Right. Number three, empathy. We spoke about this. Yes. Uh, empathy is? Um, the ability to know what someone's feeling. Correct. So you just... That again, like I said, some people have an, uh, some people are gifted with this mm. and naturally have this. Some people don't. Some people need to work on it. Yeah. Why does that person look that way? Looks like they're unhappy. Yeah. Even if it means you start from such a basic level, yeah. you start from such a level. But as I said, when you're a child, you have, you have an immense amount of emotion. Right. You know that you're feeling upset, angry, hungry, thirsty. But it's your interaction with your parents that make you feel that, you know, I can't say it to them. Right. Or I can say it to them. Mm. I feel upset. They feel upset when I say this to them. And that's how you then decide to whether express yourself or bottle things in. So it starts, as I said, from there. Okay. Yeah. And number four is what I just kind of touched upon is being able to put all of these things together. Yeah. Being self-aware. You can regulate your emotions. You are empathetic. You know how to put all of that together in your own way. Each one that will be different in all of this, okay? Yeah. So, in order to help you and me and the listeners, what habits that you need to develop in order to become more emotionally intelligent, okay? Yep. Go on. So, the first one is thinking about your feelings. And I'm going to say, the, you know, the last thing, what all this means, but thinking about your feelings mm -hmm. will make you more emotionally intelligent. Number two, Learn to take a step back before you're about to speak or act. So is that basically being thinking before you speak? 100%. Okay. All right. You don't, you don't just 
yeah. blur it out. You think, oh, hold on, whoa, 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 let me step back. Okay. Strive to control your thoughts. I had a talk many years ago. It wasn't a talk. It was a lecture by Sheikh Yasser Fazaga. Still remember his name? Yeah. Wow. He he's a psychologist, mm-hmm. Islamic. Um, he's not Islamic. He's a uh, he's a psychologist by profession, but he does a lot for Islam now. I, I'm not aware of his works now, right? But I remember years ago listening to something. Okay, mm-hmm. and what he said was because so, th- so this is strive to control your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of this? It says he said I don't know where he got this from, but he said watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. actions. Yes. Watch your actions because it becomes your habit. And watch your habit because it becomes your character. Wow. All right. Yeah. All this from a thought. Yeah. Okay. See? So the, the first thing is watch your thoughts. Hmm. So when we're told to strive to control your thoughts. Yeah. From a psychological perspective, what he said, 100%. So from your thought to your character, this is the journey yeah. your thought can take. So if you strive to control it, I feel angry, but I've got to control it. Right. Whatever that emotion may be, I don't know why I'm talking about anger. <laughs> 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 Whatever your emotion may be, you learn to control it, okay? Yeah. Next one. Try to find benefit from criticism. Okay. We don't like to be criticized as a, right. as human beings, I guess. The more in control we are of ourselves, the more humbled we become, the more grounded we become. Right. We're able to take criticism better. Yeah. Um, and so when someone criticizes you, I guess it's not to take see, you. In a way, en- yeah. See in a way that they're trying to help you more yeah. than trying to put you down. Some people do it purposely. Yeah. Yeah, Some people yeah. want to put you down, all right? But don't you, take do, it that you way. don't take it that way. You, yeah. t- you take the gem for what it is. Yeah. Barakallah fiqh for the rest. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And you take it as, all right? You're comfortable praising people for the good that they do. So if someone does any good, yeah. it's good to say, thank it you very much. Yeah. All right? It's good to recognize that and tell them, thank you. Mm. Some people don't say that, but it, you know, if things like that help in. Uh, Emotional intelligence. Yeah, emotional intelligence. Um, helping others, mm-hmm. self-explanatory. Um, and where I said about criticism, you've got the opposite, which is to give constructive feedback. So not only can, uh, you know, when someone criticizes you, yeah. and a flip situation is when you give feedback to someone, you can do it constructively. Right. So you can say you did an amazing job. However, yeah. As opposed to that was absolutely rubbish. <laughs> Do you see? And you just bring them to the floor. Yeah. All right. So you help them bring them up. Yeah. Now we've had a, a brief look, a brief look. We've had about an hour uh, talk about emotional intelligence. Yeah. I just want to quickly touch on um, examples from our tradition. Okay. All right. In our tradition, intellect, and again, these are works from. Sheikh Mikhail Smith, whose link I will put in um, into the show notes. If you visit the, the website, you can pick them up from there. Um, he says that there are three levels of intellect. Um, and scholars generally say that an average human being will achieve two out of the three. Mm. Only the righteous will be blessed with a third. So let's look at what these are. The first is intellect. Yep. Yeah. Do you know what that's called in Arabic? I do, but I forgot it. No, it's in Urdu. In Urdu? I don't know. Akal? Have you heard that? Yeah, okay, yeah. You see, when you say it to me, I remember. So it's the same in Arabic, akal, okay? Which is in its basic form, speech, deduction, choice. Mm -hmm. Someone says something, or you see something, you are able to deduce it, work out the consequences, and then make a choice. I'll give an example. You see someone smoking. Mm -hmm. You ask that person, why do you smoke? And they say, it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm stressed. It makes me feel good. And then you'd be like, but do you know what happens when you smoke? And they'll be like, yeah, it's not good for my lungs. It can give me cancer. Yeah. And you're like, then you still want to smoke. (laughs) All right? Yeah. So 
speech, the explanation of why do you smoke, mm -hmm. the deduction, the consequence, you smoke because it makes you feel good, but you know that you can get cancer, is the choice that they make. Mm. So your uncle works that way, all right? So that's a very foundation understanding of, of how your uncle works. Um, understanding. Okay. Faham. So understanding the reality of the world as it is. Right. So you see an advert of alcohol. Mm. You see in a party. Mm. Everyone's having fun. Yeah. Everyone's enjoying themselves. But you know the reality of consuming alcohol is what? Getting drunk, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. then having... Yeah, have, yeah. Do you see? Good. Other but, problems. So you look at the, the uh, you look at the commercial, and you'd be like, "Yeah, all right, mate. You just want me to." Yeah. You, you look at that commercial and can understand the reality, as opposed to being sucked into it, saying, "I need that because it's going to make me feel this." Do you okay, see? Okay. Yeah. I see it. I don't know for women. I see that handbag. It's going to make me feel good. Mm. Um, whatever you can take that commercial or take that situation and see the reality to say, no. Yeah. Mm. So that's the, yourself, that's the understanding. Yeah. Once you have your uncle has understood it, mm. you can understand what's going on. All right. So scholars say basic two. Those are basic that an average human being should be able to work with. Right. Mm. The third one is divine insight, which is in Arabic called basira. Mm. Okay, and that basically means bringing the deep understanding of the situation to the forefront and really taking it apart. Okay. All right. Um, and you know, our, our scholars in our tradition say, for those of you who are righteous and those of you um, who are as blessed, have this ability of basira that can take the situation and understand the truth for what it is. Okay, mm -hmm. um, it's important to realize that our tradition, as well, I mean, akal is important, but it's not emphasized to say that you use your intelligence in understanding a math test. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of your understanding of the intellect. Yeah. The Islamic perspective of the intellect is to know God. Okay. Not your math score and all of that, which is where we unfortunately, sadly, put more emphasis in. Mm. So the, 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 our tradition spelled it out. So you look at the world for what it is and realize that all knowledge at the end comes down to the fact that there is a creator. Okay. That should take you where your knowledge is, all right? And so for, for if you look at our examples, the reasons why we were such polymaths um, and we experienced such great heights is because we took that knowledge and realized the one who has given this knowledge is the creator and sustainer of the worlds. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that was how it was. Yeah. Have you come across that hadith that um, Aisha Rajalan have said to the Prophet that I know then, sorry, the Prophet said, mm. uh, Alaihi Wasallam said mm -hmm. to Aisha Razi Anu that I know when you're upset with me. I don't know. I, I don't think I've heard that one before. Okay. okay. So basically he said to Aisha that I know when you're upset with me. And she smiled and said, when? And she goes, when you call me, when you say uh, uh, the Lord of Ibrahim instead of the Lord of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right. So, he kn so again, I'm saying about emotional intelligence, just in a change of speech, He's, he's able to work out that she's upset. Mm. All right. We have other things. Um, uh, we have we have things like from his life that you look at and you can say how he challenged certain viewpoints. Um, so, for example, masculinity. Right. We see as the man. Mm. All right. As yeah. the look, as the feel doesn't really give a monkeys about his of emotions. I've got to do what it, what needs to be done. All yeah. right. The Prophet ﷺ challenged that viewpoint. Right. I can't remember where I heard this, but um, there's examples of certain hadith. I, I can't, I don't know what they are, um, but I'm sure you have heard it before where um, I think it was Hassan Hussain would come and sit on his lap and he'd sit yeah, and kiss yeah. them. And then there was someone who said, and you prophet like you show such emotion to them like we we men we, we've never done this to our children yeah and he goes what can i do if god has removed mercy from your hearts mm. yeah like this is stuff that doesn't make you less of a man to show your emotions right right because like we lived in we, we live in a an era where we're taught a man shouldn't show his emotions man up 
yeah? yeah we we say that kind of stuff but the process said that subhanallah this is not how we behave right. all right there's also something that I, th- I i i remember the scholar i don't know if it was sheikh um sheikh michael smith mm. but he narrates a hadith to say that um again it's signs of emotional intelligence when the, he's making sujood the process is making sujood and one of his grandchildren come on his back and he doesn't come up until they come off his back themselves he doesn't push them off yeah he doesn't move them off they wait until they come off and then they then when when they finish the salah and one of the sahabi says ya rasulullah we thought you passed away whilst you were reading sujood right. and then he would narrate that no so, you know i don't know if it was hasan or saying one of them was on, and i let them stay there and let them come off when they wanted to themselves again emotionally intelligent to yeah. the child now understanding the nature of that child say i'm on my grandfather i'm having fun mm. not realizing that oh you know what i've just got told off right there was none of that so again it's it's showing signs of him showing emotional intelligence um there are there are many stories that you can look and for those of you um who've read the seer of the prophet would relate that there are many encounters that he's had with people where he's been very empathetic and he's had that realization of the loss of other people maybe because he lost himself mm. like if you look at the seerah he lost both parents at a very young age he lost his father and mother at young age yes yeah. he lost his grandfather he lost his uncle abu talib he lost his wife khadija he lost his three sons yeah he lost i think was it three daughters he had four daughters think, yeah, three daughters months, yeah yeah so all of that loss and you're thinking and in his lifetime yeah now Allah didn't do that as a source of punishment it's a source of empowerment and understanding being more empathetic yeah for loss yeah there was a there was something i'd read and it said um that when i think when his son was lost when he lost his son i don't know if it was ibrahim or abdullah okay. or Qasim, but he held him and he was crying right. right and some sahabi came to him and asked him a question again it was something like and you like you cry mm and like he was explaining to him that what i utter from my mouth will not be anything that goes against what allah says so i'm not going to do i'm not going to say something yeah. that's going to upset allah yeah like why why this and he's like yeah no yeah. but he goes allah has given me these tears as a mercy right so how human emotion is important mm. you shouldn't cut yourself off from it and become robotic realize you suffer loss but then you know that there is something at the end of this my lord is trying to teach me something do you understand yeah, yeah. so you, there are various stories you can relate from that um and and there's many gems you can take from that there was there was another one i heard that someone came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said that ya rasulullah i feel my heart is getting hard okay all right and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him go and touch the ch- the head of an orphan child yeah for the son before yeah, yeah. Now you look at the hikmah behind that. They say not only does it help the person touching the child but it also helps the child. Yeah, so sometimes you know like there's this some psychology behind this. Right. Right? Yeah. But again, showing and exchanging an emotion. Yeah. You know, um is an unbelievable thing and can really really empower you. Another story in the Quran which we talk about in uh, emotion intelligence with the Yusuf alayhi salam. Okay. And that's the dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. Oh, all right yeah. so yusuf al-islam has the dream with 11 stars prostrating and a moon and the sun right yeah and he narrates that to his father mm. and his father says do you remember not not exactly but do you remember what he advised I, him i don't remember actually but i remember hearing the story though. okay so he says don't tell your brothers again i'm paraphrasing oh, yeah don't tell your brothers they're going to scheme against you mm. all right now if you think about that again emotional intelligence right don't tell your brothers they're going to scheme against you all right so he's explained to his son again i'm paraphrasing that your brothers are already kind of jealous of you mm. and it's not there that they have the ability to interpret interpret dreams that you're going to say oh it guess what guys 11 stars and a moon and the sun prostrated towards me and they're going to understand that because they can't interpret dreams mm. but you say to them you say something praiseworthy to them that things worth making sujood to you yeah is enough for them to feel why you okay yeah, yeah Do you see yeah. they don't have to interpret the dream they just have to you say something that's a bit praiseworthy mm. or some good is coming your way that and that's enough for them to kind of snap and 
Yusuf's father, who was? Yunus. No. Yeah, it's another you cool one. Cool. You're cool. Okay. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> you shouldn't be. I know. I haven't recapped this in a very long time. I should. Mm. I really should. So Yaqub al-Islam told his son, don't tell your brothers. Because he knows. All right? And it's not, as a brother, you may be excited to tell your brothers. Yeah. But he's saying, intelligence, I know your brothers. And he doesn't say it in a way that, don't. He, he says it in a very, my beloved son. You know, yeah. In a nice way that he, he knows that my father's got my back. He understands the situation better. Right. Okay. Yeah. We're coming towards the end um, of the podcast. And I just wanted to um, give, a, give a bit of advice for myself first and foremost. And, and to you listening that emotional intelligence is very important. And especially in this digital world we're living in where we spend a lot more time behind the screen then in front of it that it's dulling our ability to read people. We just want people to tell us what's, what's wrong with you. Mm. What's the problem? It, it shouldn't be the case. And it was never from our tradition. We were the people who were able to read things without them being said. All right. And people yeah. who've marked their names in history, I'll give you an example, Bruce Lee, mastered such gifts of working such your body language that they were able to tell you what you're about to do. Are you a friend or a foe? Okay. Yeah. Are you about to attack me or not? Um, and it's a skill that everyone should should be keen to develop um, and be eager to develop in your children, okay? Um, and what I think, you know, what I'd like to, what, what I think would help is next time you put in a situation, really think about these three things I'm going to say, all right? Okay. So if the situation arises, think, does it need to be said? Right. Number one, okay? Does it need to be said? Does it need to be said by you? Okay. All right. Yeah. So the first thing is, does it need to be said? Mm-hmm. Second one is, does it need to be said by you? Third one is, does it need to be said by you now? Okay. All right. So something needs to be said. Oh, sorry. You, you've observed something. You want to say something. Three things. Does it need to be said? Does it need to, does it need to be said by you? Does it need to be said by you now? When you're able to dice- uh, decipher those things to say, okay, maybe I don't need to say it now. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I'm not the right person to say this. Maybe I need to get so-and-so to say this. Yeah. When you start doing that, you then start helping with emotional intelligence and the situation in itself. Okay? Right. Um, and remember, people will not always remember what you say or said, but they will definitely remember how you make them feel. So, Iman. Yes. I think today's been the longest podcast, actually. I think it has, maybe. Can we do a little quiz? Yeah, go on. Yeah, let's do a little quiz. We'll end with a quiz, a little fun quiz to work out your emotional intelligence. <laughs> All right? Okay. So uh, it's something I found on the internet. It's a bit of fun in games. Mm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you my phone. Okay. All right, because some are visual. All right? So All you know, right. But you can, you can explain what you're seeing and then give your answer. Okay. All right? So here we go. Start your test. Okay, which smile is real? So explain what you're seeing. Okay, so I see two women smiling Mm -hmm. and they do look really similar, but basically... um, Okay, I'm going to say B. Okay. G, yeah. Uh, Another, I can see uh, Obama this time and he's smiling. The first one, A, looks real. These are about smiles, aren't they now? No idea. Okay. Uh, th- now I can see this is Hillary Clinton, right? No. Who is she? She is the Prime Minister of Germany. Why do you look so similar? <laughs> okay. Hillary is the first one. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, go on. Is she fake smiling or real smile? Okay. Uh, the, the second one looks real. Okay, which emotion do you see? I can. Okay, so I can see someone, but I can only see half their face. Okay. And to the bit of the side. So I got surprise, confusion, shame, or sadness. Uh, okay, it's not confused. It's not sad. I don't think surprise. I don't know, maybe shame. I'm, not sure. I'm gonna say shame, I guess. Which emotion do you see? Who's this guy? Is he Jake Gyllenhaal? Is he? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So it's half of his face. So okay. outrage, jealousy, curiosity, suspicion. That looks suspicious to okay. me. Okay. Which emotion do you see? <laughs> this is funny. I can just see like wide eyes, basically. Okay. So I'm just gonna say. 
It could be fifth. I'm just going to say fifth. Okay. Okay, now I see no pictures now. All right. So this one says, I never make excuses and always take responsibility for what happened. Uh, is it a true and false question? I'm going to say this is a bit like me. Right. So it says, this is not like me at all. This is a bit like me. This is a lot like me. This is always like me. Okay. It's going to be a bit. Because I do sometimes make excuses, especially for when I end up there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I can pinpoint why I'm upset to a spe- uh, specific cause. Um, not always, but a lot of the time I can. Um, I generally have a good sense of humor about myself. A bit like me. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I meet obstacles, I adapt my course of action easily. Um, a bit like me. Yeah. Uh, my emotions hardly impact the way I behave. Uh, yeah, this is always me. Because when I am upset, I don't really show it anyway. Okay. It doesn't really impact me. I try to still be happy, I guess. You should work on your emotional intelligence. I should, All yeah. Right. Uh, I see. So, like I said, it's okay. Yeah, I know, but I I don't know. Sometimes I can't I mean, control music it. Is just like, it's okay. It's quite. Yeah, I know. It's like some it's Batman stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I set myself more challenging goals than the ones that are set to me. This. Do is you push me. yourself? Sometimes, I okay. guess, but it's not. An, okay. I would say a bit like me. Okay. Others trust me naturally. I don't think. Should I answer this? Yeah. Do you feel that others trust you? I feel like that. Okay. So I'd say it's a lot. I mean, not just. Okay. Yeah. I'm good at bringing out the best in other people. Um, See, something with me, I can't actually see if that, if I'm good at that I've seen you in situations where you're helping people and you're like, yes, you can do it. Okay. (laughs) It's not me just being a good dad. I'm telling you. And I know you can see it. um, Getting people enthusiastic is more important to me than having them exactly understand what I am saying. Okay. Um me um i don't know i think i'm just gonna say this is a bit like me okay because sometimes if they don't understand and i have to keep explaining it just feels weird okay so just be like okay whatever you got it's what it is okay okay so questions? i've got a hundred i was finished now okay so my iq my EQ. emotional iq it says emotional iq there it's 128 128 so what you do is you go down and then it says well done your EQ is in the top 10%. Wow. Is it just saying that? Is it some of those things just no, saying so that? It's saying... Uh, Does it have like right answers for the ones no, I No, no, it just tells you how you've done. Ah, okay. So, there you go. Top 10% Iman. Wow. Be proud of yourself. I should be proud of myself. And always wow. express yourself in words and emotions that are going to be productive. Yes. All right. Why this music? Can I ask? I don't know. It's just I thought it'd be. It seemed very like sad. Chill. Sad? I don't know. If okay. It sounds like someone's just like. Well, that's quite. Inter- that's quite interesting because I was trying to find something which is kind of chilled out, mellow, and I thought. Right. Once yeah, you're I answering questions, that, you kind of do that. Um, but there you go. So well done. Um, my advice to you and me and the listeners are to be a bit more in tune with your emotions, to realize that they're okay. Is how you deal with it how you behave and make sure that what you say and what you do are not destructive but constructive um, and you make your experience with others enjoyable you make your interactions with other people more enjoyable um, and you're more self-aware and we need more people who are understanding their emotions and not using that sideline oh no emotions no can't show it bottle it up you're seeing a rise in mental health and we'll, we'll probably do another podcast on this purely because of people are finding that they're not supposed to say and do certain things. And because of it, it's affecting the mental health. But this is something where, like I said, you should manage it. And if you do it properly, it can be quite pleasant and it can be quite empowering. All right. Yeah. Um, and it's in our tradition yet again. A lot of the things that you'll find that we're taught to behave and do, which are now resurfacing, are from our tradition. For some apparent reason, how it got lost in translation, mm. you know, bewilders me but these are things where we do these kind of episodes to kind of revive things and saying look it's important and it's necessary in a time and a place like now where we are too locked up in front of screens we're too involved in fake you know you saw those fake smiles and a real smile we can't identify who's fake who's not and 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 situations that we need to be away 
and really ponder and be self-reflective. Okay. Mm. So Iman, Jazakallah Khairan, another okay. amazing podcast we have done today, episode six. Guys, what I need you to do is head over to www.minimalisticmuslim.com. Type in your email address, subscribe so you'll know and you'll be kept up to date with the latest podcast and any other things that are happening. So until the next one, Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.